Christine Cornells, and we have a great show for you today with Top of the Morning. We are meeting women who have been, who are about to be inducted into the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame. And these are women who are chosen every year. They're women who have been chosen for lasting contributions to the economic, political, cultural, and societal life of the state and to provide role models to achievement of achievement for our future women leaders. So we have some very distinguished women and looking forward to introducing them to you. And thank you for joining us. We'll be right back. started in 1985 and every year extraordinary women both living and deceased have been inducted and we are so proud of everyone in our state and the role models they provide to inspire the young girls and women and the young boys to learn to respect and admire uh, and be full partners with the women and girls in our state. And we're back. We're here with Treasurer Nancy Cobb. Congratulations on being inducted Thank to the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you so Fame. much. It's very exciting. It's Great such, honor. It's a wonderful honor. It seems like so many incredible women are, are part yes. of this. Yeah. And we're excited yeah. to be able to meet you yeah. and learn a little bit about uh, your experience oh, as well. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Great. Well, I understand you are only the second woman to serve as a Maryland State Treasurer. That's right. Uh, Maryland has had treasurers since before it was a state but I am the second woman. The first woman also is a member of the Hall of Fame. Is that right? Uh, yeah, Lucille Moore from Montgomery County, who is an absolutely wonderful and gifted woman, a gem. Um, I try to model myself on Lucille Moore. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Terrific person. And what is your role as state treasurer? I, I think yeah. I know what it is, but if you could actually... Sure. No, well, the, the, the state treasurer has many roles, but basically I'm in charge of safeguarding the state funds. The comptroller collects the taxes, the, uh, the treasurer invests the, invests the money, uh, makes sure that the money in the bank equals the money on the books. We are in charge of taking the state of Maryland to the bond market to borrow, to borrow money. We had a big uh, bond sale, $600 million actually, today. Wow, and, congratulations. Uh, and we borrow the money and then we use it to build schools, sometimes prisons and roads also. Um, and then also we're in charge of the banking relationships of the state. So when a state agency has a bank account, we help procure the bank for them. And we also invest all that tax money uh, is invested overnight. We don't let anything sit around and then uh, pay, pay our uh, debts and our uh, checks and everything. So off you of are constantly keeping track of everything. You must have to well, constantly be in communication with multiple believe, people. Believe it or not, I don't do it by myself. <laughs> I have a great, how, how terrific staff. How big of a staff, staff do you have? The staff altogether is about 55 people. Okay. Um, and, and a little bit of our, of our staff actually is focused on uh, procuring and defending the insurance of the state. Mm. So among other things, if you were on a state highway and there's a pothole that we ought to have fixed and we didn't, and you want to get the, the malfactor to help uh, pay for the cost of your new wheel, it's the state treasurer's office and the insurance uh, uh, wing that, that does that. It. But also, I chair the board of trustees of the teachers and state employees pension system, which is now a $37 billion uh, fund. Wow. And uh, looking out for hundreds of thousands of state employees, retirees, and their families. Sounds like a big, big responsibility. It's, it's a challenge. It's a wonderful honor. And I must apologize, too, we have some noise in the background because we are just yeah. prior to her being inducted into the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame. So we have some of the participants and some of the attendees already showing up. So uh, hopefully you can hear us over that. Murmur background. in the crowd. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you also served in the Maryland House of Delegates for 27 yes, years. Yes, I did. What, what were one or two of your victories that, that you enjoy uh, well, thinking about? It was a great time representing Montgomery County, but of course looking out at the whole state. 
I chaired the uh, committee that uh, had purview over higher education, over funding for higher education. One of the major things was the reorganization of the University System of Maryland into the system that we know now, the multi-campus system. Uh, when did that happen? System. That was in 1987, 88, 89, took, took a little while. But I think uh, now the University of Maryland is one of the premier institutions and premier uh, uh, sets of institutions in, in, in the country. And I think some of that is because of, uh, of the work that we did. But also, when I started out, I was working with uh, Helen Koss, who was an outstanding woman legislator for Montgomery County, and Lucy Moore, who was a legislator before she was state treasurer. And uh, uh, with them, actually helped draft the bill that then set up a system so that women could have credit in their own names. Because before right? that, yeah, their husbands had to sign on to applications for credit cards or... or uh, Did other states mortgages? adopt uh, such a practice about well? the same About the same time, there was a movement. Uh, Helen also uh, uh, allowed me to work with her to set up the first displaced homemaker center, which is to some extent from... The term is from another era, but it is for, for women who had been in the home 20 years, 30 years, all of a sudden are left uh, with, uh, with no means of support, mm. either through uh, divorce or death of, of, of their spouse, and hadn't at that point had the training to support a, a family. Financial literacy, but also work training. And the Displaced Homemaker Center was the first little site to, to, uh, to focus on these on these women. So there were a lot of things. It was a wonderful opportunity to serve. It's so great to be able to hear about that. And I, you were also appointed by President Clinton uh, to the National Assessment Governing Board. Yes. What does that board do? Well, what was what National was Assessment Governing Board, the NAGB, is the board that is in charge of the uh, NAEP tests, the National Assessment and Educational Progress tests, which are known as the, the nation's report card. Okay. And they are tests that are administered on a regular basis across the country so you can compare progress um, across, this, across the states and uh, over time uh, within, the same, within the same state. And it was one of the first um, efforts at uh, accountability in, in education, but also support, because you, you use the results to try to improve the education system. It must be pretty amazing to see some of these things that you've had your finger yeah. on and see it's where they are today. Oh, it's wonderful. It's great. Do you have any advice to young women who are in their career, you know, early in their career, and trying to make uh, education decisions or I, job I, decisions? I, sh I sure do. I, I, I did not know when I was in college or in graduate school what I was going to be doing for the rest of my life. Actually, my mm -hmm. sights were set on getting a PhD in classical political philosophy and doing the best work ever on Aristotle. But I was fortunate uh, enough to have an opportunity to work on Capitol Hill, to work in the legislature here, and then to run for office. And I would say that there is nothing like, like serving the public. There's no challenge and there's no greater pleasure. You don't get rich, if <laughs> you shouldn't. But, but the ability to touch people's lives and to, uh, to repair the world, to make, make the world better for the community, it's a, it's a great thing. I would love to see more young women running for office or serving in public service if you don't want to run. There are many other, any other opportunities, but there, there just is nothing better. Well, it's wonderful. Well, it's such a pleasure to be able to meet you, and thank you oh, very thank much you. for sharing you. your experiences with us, and congratulations again. Oh, thank, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We'll be right back. We'd like to ask Del Delegate John Carden to come forward at this time. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, John, I just wanted to take um, a moment of personal privilege to say congratulations to all the winners. Um, I had the unique opportunity to nominate Treasurer Nancy Kopp, who's about to be introduced. And I just wanted to say very quickly that in all of my years in public service, um, sh much shorter than many of you who are in the room, um, there are very few women I've encountered who are more deserving of this honor. Some of them are here in the room who I've nominated in the past, actually have a pretty good track record, almost perfect. 
and I'm so excited to see some of my nominees who are also here. Um, but it's not because I've been, uh, I, I, I have any special influences because the people that I nominate are very, very well deserving of this award. A treasure uh, cop has acquired nothing but the utmost respect from the people whom she encounters. The Maryland Commission on Women um, requires that the awardees, quote, and this is from your webpage, um, contribute above and beyond the call of duty, uh, end quote, in order to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well, Treasurer Cobb and her colleagues on, on the front uh, seats have certainly satisfied this requirement. Um, and uh, after 27 years at serving as a state delegate, she's now making sure that we handle all of our finances in the utmost uh, um, uh, appropriate ways. And she is just an amazing person, and you're going to hear more about her in a moment. Um, but for everything she does for me with the American Council of Young Political Leaders, and she, everything she does for all of us in the House Delegates, whenever we call, she answers our calls, and she calls us back personally immediately. She's an amazing person, and I'm so happy that one of my former colleagues, uh, <coughs> Delegate Petzl, is going to be able to introduce her. So congratulations to you, uh, Treasurer Cobb, and to all of you folks. Thank you very much. We'd like to bring forward at this time Carol Petzl, an old friend of mine from way back when is going to tell us a little bit about Treasurer Nancy Cobb. It is indeed my great honor and certainly a pleasure and a privilege to introduce to you Treasurer Nancy Cobb, a longtime friend and former colleague. The biography in your program outlines her accomplishments as a member of the House of Delegates for 27 years and as State Treasurer for 10 years. It mentions that she is a graduate of Wellesley College and holds a master's degree from the University of Chicago and also holds four honorary degrees. But what it doesn't say is that Nancy was the first sitting member of the legislature to have a baby. And that baby is here tonight um, and has children of her own by now, twins. Younger women at that time were new to the legislature in the 70s. In preparation for the nomination of Treasurer Cobb for this award, I reached out to several well-respected Marylanders who joined in supporting this nomination. And I'd like to share with you some of their comments. Dr. Martha Smith, president of Anne Arundel Community College, wrote of Nancy Cobb's extraordinary talent, insight, and commitment to people and to all of her responsibilities. Because of her exemplary leadership and character, she has served as a role model for hundreds, if not thousands, of women. And Dr. Smith included her as one of those who considered Nancy a role model. Deborah Toll also cited Treasurer Cobb as a perfect role model for women. Dr. William Kerwin, Chancellor of the University of Maryland System, wrote, as a state delegate, Nancy was a force for positive change. Regarding the financial aid task force which she chaired, he said, the resulting report was a national model in terms of responsibility in financial aid, balancing need-based aid with merit-based aid. He concluded that her input and insights were key elements in generating such a far-reaching report. And finally, Senator Brian Frosch summed it up very succinctly. I can think of no one who has made greater contributions to the state of Maryland over the past three decades. Nancy Cobb. Thank you. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> uh, let me just say that uh, uh, I could relate s so well to what uh, what the judge just said, Diane Lotz. It's it's uh, amazing, but uh, I had never expected to uh, to be here, and it's been an absolutely wonderful wonderful trip. And standing here tonight has been extraordinary. I uh, I had some wonderful. Uh, what you call now mentors. I didn't know they were mentors, but, but models over the years, starting of course with a, with a mother whom uh, Carol might recall was much more a natural politician than, than I. 
In fact, the first time I, I ran for office, she had to take me by hand and walk door to door because I'm not that sociable a person that my mother was. But the first, uh, the first person that I worked for uh, as a college intern, and then after I graduated, was Congresswoman Edith Green from Portland, Oregon. And actually, I worked in her office and her subcommittee at the same time that Bunny Sandler did. <laughs> Uh, she was a magnificent model of somebody who came up the tough way and, uh, and toughed it out the, uh, the, whole, the whole time. And then I came to Annapolis and had the wonderful opportunity to staff the Montgomery County delegation to Annapolis, work directly for the vice chairman of the delegation, who was Lucille Moore, with whom I subsequently shared an office for 10 years, and then Lucy, was the first treasurer, first woman treasurer of the state of Maryland, a great model and a great mentor to so many of us. I, I, uh, I think almost every day. I do think every day of Lucy because her portrait is actually looking at me. <laughs> but she was an inspiration for so many people. Um, not only Carol and, and the rest of us in the legislature, but for the people in the in the treasurer's office. I had the opportunity also in the last 10 years to work with a truly outstanding public servant, one of the most uh, uh, amazing women I have ever, ever known, and that's Bernadette Bennett, who is the chief deputy treasurer, who uh, keeps reminding me when I stray from the Lucy Moore path that I have to get back <laughs> on it. And, and then finally, a, uh, another mentor, a woman in the legislature with whom and for whom both Carol and I have worked over the years who I find it hard to talk about without choking up because she was really, I think, the model of a great woman as well as a great uh, public servant. That was Helen Koss, who also uh, has been honored here. Helen was the first uh, chair of a standing committee of the Maryland House of Delegates. Uh, she had a lot of young men on her committee, and they rebelled against her. And uh, uh, Speaker Ben Cardin had to bring them in and bring her in and say, no, this is the chairman, and you're going to respect her as the chairman. They, of course, uh, it's not a romance, but it turned out very nicely. They, of course, became her cheering section. And it was the most unified and most powerful uh, committee at that time in the legislature because she was a great leader, someone who, uh, who, who I think of very, very often. So I, uh, I, I just feel, as Diana said, lucky, blessed. I was in the right place at the right time. I have two other people that I have to introduce here. Uh, my husband, who uh, has been my true mentor and guardian for the last 40 years, my ethics advisor, with, without whom I don't know what would have happened, and Emily uh, Cobb-Dantas, who was uh, the first child born to a, uh, as far as I know, an incumbent member of any state legislature in the United States. We've done research, can't find anyone else. And, uh, and Diane is, is, is the mother of two wonderful grandchildren. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Carol Petzl, who's swell. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed the show today. It's been so wonderful to be able to meet these distinguished women. I'm glad to be able to learn something from them myself, and I hope you did as well. And please, in the honor of the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame, Think about ways that you can also contribute to society to, have, to make significant and lasting contributions and how you yourself also can serve as role models to our future leaders. Thank you for joining us. Keep tuning in and we will see you next time.